Now, um, how nasty is nasty? The, um, here's this, this um, table again. I think I showed it to you earlier on in one of the earlier um, lectures when I was just pointing out the fact that, you know, there's such thing as pollutants and they exist, you know, we, we can look at them using concentration, either parts per million or micrograms per cubic meter. And these are standards, quality standards. If, if the, what it means is if your exposure to carbon monoxide over eight hours is greater than nine parts per million, then um, that's too high, a, a bit above nine. And a one hour is 35. Now, why is it smaller over a longer time period than a shorter time period? Because what this is telling you, if you're exposed for nine parts per million over eight hours, then that means the carbon monoxide is just going to keep sticking to and sticking to and sticking to your hemoglobin. It actually adds up. Whereas the one hour, if you have a short exposure, you can go for a little bit of higher concentration because then you'll be back into fresh air and you'll be, um, um, you'll, you can eventually work it off your hemoglobin with the fresh air. So you can go a little higher for short periods of time, but over long periods of time, it just is an additive effect. Okay, so, so this is how nasty it is. So it's it, it, very low concentrations, it causes an effect. So this is what the Environmental Protection Agency is doing, is monitoring you know, carbon monoxide concentrations, making sure that they're low out of cars and in, uh, in urban areas. <clears throat> they monitor it to tell people about the air quality. Nitrogen dioxide, your annual average exposure, only 0 0.053, that is nasty stuff. Okay, and then um, ozone. Here's another nasty pollutant. We haven't talked about ozone yet, but we need to talk about ozone. Um, lead, um, right here, it doesn't give, remember, a parts per million. It only gives a microgram per cubic meter, and that's because lead, as the lead exists um, in the air as a pollutant, it, um, it exists as a solid, little clumps of solids, um, little, little tiny particles of lead. And I just want to take a minute, I think, right now to tell you about that. Let me find a piece of paper to write on. Now, in order to understand this business between, you know, how can we report it as a part per million or only as a microgram per cubic meter, you need to understand um, something. And that is, remember a gas, if you have a gas, say oxygen exists as a gas, as an oxygen molecule, that means the next oxygen molecule is not touching that oxygen molecule. They're separated by a great distance, and each molecule is moving um, in its own direction at a fast speed. You know, so that's a gas, right? Um, individual um, pure substances not clumped together. If you have carbon dioxide, like, say this is carbon, whoops, carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide in the gas is completely separated from all the other gas particles and all the other carbon dioxide particles. But lead, lead exists as little solid um, bits. So let's say this is a lead atom, an atom of lead. Um, the lead is going to exist in little tiny, tiny clumps of lead, lots of individual lead atoms. In order to have lead gas, you'd have to just have one lead, one lead separated by great distance. One lead atom, one lead atom. But it's really like little, little clumps of lead. It's so small you can't see it, but it's, we can't call it a gas because it's not existing as a gas because there's, you know, maybe, um, you know, 100,000 lead atoms stuck together in one particle of lead. And so that's why we don't call it a gas. It's just small, small bits of lead. So that's just a little aside to let you know why we don't report it in parts per million, because it would really have to be, the parts all have to be in the same phase, in the gas phase. Particulates, we'll get to that um, in the next um, lecture, sulfur dioxide, ozone. Ozone is what I want to talk about next. So um, we're going to stop this uh, video right here. Um, this is going to be the end of part one of lecture 11. I'm going to pick up with part two talking about ozone.